Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting trigonometric equation. We have tangent cotangent x equals cotangent of tangent x. And we're going to be solving for x values. We're also going to discuss when we have real solutions and when we don't. And at the end, I'm going to show you a graph, which is actually really cool. So let's get started. First of all, we have the main functions on the outside, tangent and cotangent. And as you know, these are co-functions in trigonometry. They're reciprocals at the same time. And this is not always true because sine and cosine are also co-functions, but they are not reciprocals. Anyways, so since these are co-functions, we can basically uh, say the following tangent of pi over 2 minus alpha is the same thing as cotangent of alpha. So if you have two angles who um, that are complementary, which means their sum is pi over 2 radians or 90 degrees, then the tangent of one of the angles is equal to the cotangent of the other angle. So I can give you an example, which will make it hopefully more concrete. Tangent 10 degrees is the same as cotangent 8 degrees because 10 plus 80 is equal to 90 degrees. Make sense? Okay. Now let's go ahead and replace our cotangent thing with something in terms of tangent. So in this case, alpha would be tangent x, which is interesting because we're kind of talking about a tangent being the angle. Anyways, so we have tangent of cotangent x equals, now I'm going to replace cotangent with tangent pi over 2 minus alpha. Alpha in this case is tangent x. Make sense? I hope it does. Now, this is good because now we have tangent on both sides. Because in order to be able to solve these equations, you have to have the same kind of function on both sides or either side. So that's what we got. And now, how do you solve these kinds of equations, right? So when you have something like tangent alpha equals tangent beta, this equation can easily be solved by tan inversing both sides, but you also have to include the periods. So to keep a long story short, this implies alpha equals beta plus n pi, where n is an integer. You can definitely add uh, multiples of pi because pi is the period for the tangent function. Okay, cool, cool. Now, we have to add, so to solve this, we're going to set these equal to each other. Cotangent x equals pi over 2 minus tangent x plus n times pi. So that's going to be the general solution, obviously. n is an integer, so by replacing n with certain values, we're going to get a bunch of different solutions. And some of these solutions are good, some of these are not good. So let's go ahead and find out which ones are good solutions. Let's go ahead and put the cotangent and tangent on the same side by adding tangent to both sides. So we're going to get cotangent x plus tangent x equals pi over 2 plus n pi. Again, n is an integer. Now, since cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, I can write this as 1 over tangent x plus tangent x equals pi over 2 plus n pi. Obviously, you could also write this as 2n plus 1 times pi divided by 2. In other words, odd multiples of pi over 2, like pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, 99 pi over 2, so on and so forth. Now, one thing is important here that should be significant. We have the sum of two reciprocals. And what does that tell you? So I'm going to do a little bit of substitution here to make our life easier. Set tangent x equal to t and set this constant equal to k. For fixed values of n, obviously, this is a constant, right? Okay. So now let's go ahead and uh, write this, uh, rewrite this we get t plus 1 over t equals k. And this equation is, I know it's oversimplified, but we're going to solve this as a quadratic. Have you noticed? This is a quadratic equation. So we're going to solve this equation using the quadratic formula. And then we're going to back substitute t and k. And then we're going to get an expression for x. And then we're going to do a little bit of something. And we're also going to discuss when we have real solutions. 
okay and at the end as I said earlier I'll show you a graph okay so let's go ahead and multiply both sides by t we get t squared plus 1 equals kt okay and then put the kt on the left you get your full quadratic and solve this using the quadratic formula t becomes negative b k plus minus the square root of k squared minus 4 and that is divided by 2 so the quadratic formula gives us the solutions real quick but what is t what is k let's back substitute t is tangent x so let's go ahead and replace t with tangent x and k is a constant which is this one so that is k right 2n plus 1 times pi over 2 and I have to write it again one more time inside uh, the radical but since we're gonna square it why not just square it right <laughs> square everything minus 4 and then I'll make a common denominator and the, all of uh, the whole thing is divided by 2 so let's make a common denominator here so we don't have to write this gigantic thing again I can basically write this as minus 16 divided by 4 because minus 4 means minus 16 fourths make sense okay cool cool how do you like it <laughs> beautiful right <laughs> yeah it is beautiful so this is tangent x so what are we gonna do with this though okay are we gonna we're gonna check for real solutions does this equation always have real solutions well not necessarily because we have a discriminant if the discriminant is less than zero then we don't have any real solutions we have complex solutions that can be solved as well but that's gonna be super time consuming you can do it on your own time so let's go ahead and take a look at the delta discriminant that is 2n plus 1 squared multiply by pi squared minus 16 divided by 4 I want this to be greater than or equal to 0 in order to have real solutions right that's the real deal so now if you multiply both sides by 4 you're gonna get this obviously 4 times 0 is 0 add oh, did I write 4 on the right hand side okay it's supposed to be 0 and then add 16 to both sides and then we're gonna get something a little simpler but we're gonna make it better by square rooting both sides but you have to be careful when you have something like you know y squared is greater or equal to x squared and you square root both sides you don't get you don't just get y is greater or equal to x that's part of the solution you have to use absolute values right that's what we're gonna do but 16 is positive already so we don't have to worry about it just let's square root it so we're gonna get after square rooting we're gonna get the absolute value of 2n plus 1 multiply by pi by the way we don't have the pi over 2 because we multiply both sides and this is gonna be greater or equal to 4 because we square rooted 16 and that becomes 4 makes sense what am I gonna do with this we're gonna solve it how do you solve greater than type absolute value inequalities easy you just solve it like you split it up into two cases this one and that one think about it like a number whose absolute value is greater or equal to 4 either that number is to the right of 4 or to the left of negative 4 because you have, if you have a negative number like negative 5 and negative 6 and negative 10 its absolute value is also greater than or equal to 4 makes sense and from here we're gonna get obviously a value for n if you go ahead and isolate to n plus 1 um, let's erase this not pi to n plus 1 is greater or equal to 4 over pi subtract 1 and divide by 2 you're gonna get n is greater or equal to 4 pi minus pi over 2 pi and approximately this is gonna give you n is greater or equal to 0 0.137 let me just give it to you for free and then from here you're gonna get 2n plus 1 is less than or equal to negative 4 over pi and n is gonna be less than or equal to negative 4 minus pi over 2 pi I just want to get your attention here to one fact that if you add these up you're going to get negative 1 and the second inequality gives you n is less than or equal to negative 1.137 that's why they have the same decimal parts so these values tell you what if n is 0 there is no real solutions if n is negative 1 no real solutions okay so no real solutions otherwise we always have real solutions and here's the graph and we're gonna finish up with that there you go isn't that beautiful okay interesting graph and by the way um, this big huge white dot represents the origin because it's hard to see you see how the graph um, kind of um, graphs intersect together um, 
and obviously they do intersect. So there are solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.